All right, everybody, we are now joined by Elena Deldon. Um, we'll go ahead and just get started with questions if that works for you, Elena. Yeah. All right, um, Kareem, go ahead. Hey, what's up, Elena? How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. 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 Is that your shoe wall in the back? I told you I've got a problem. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I can't hang with you, but you know, I've got my uh, own little no, problem I think over you here. Can. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, it's gonna start off with the obvious, you know. It's it's been a minute since you've been out with the team and and with uh, in inside the program. So, what's it like being back and back on the floor and and being part of the program that you were such a big part of for so long? It's um, it's really awesome to be back. I feel like it's been like nearly a year since the last camp that I was at, and. That one was a big point for me, just being back with the team, uh, coming off my surgeries, still figuring out you know, if I'd be able to play in a season. Uh, so I would like participate in the beginning parts of those practices. And then I was kind of on the side court shooting. Um, and then now a year later, you know, getting a bunch of WNBA games under my belt and uh, being at this camp, it's so nice to be in full practice, feeling great um, back out there. I. I absolutely love USA basketball. I have had incredible moments out here with some of these players. So to be back, to be a little bit older, <laughs> it's, uh, it's all good. Ariel said you're banging. Is, are, are you full, full go with absolutely no hesitations or anything? Yeah, I'm full go. No hesitations. Yeah, I was setting some big screens today on the guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely perfect. Uh, yeah. Appreciate you. Glad to see you back out there. Thanks. Megan, go ahead. Hi, Elena. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. Um, so season 10, we're going into season 10 for the W. Um, can you talk about some of the things that have changed in your time in the W? We got we had a huge free agency and we got a big draft coming up. So what are you looking yeah. forward to also going into this season? I'm excited uh, about you know the moves we've made and where we're at. I do think you know, from when I started in this league to now, free agency has gotten way crazier. Like there's so much more movement and that's exciting. It's exciting for the players. It's exciting for fans, I'm sure. Uh, so that's certainly different. Coverage has been much better. Um, I don't have as many people asking me when our season is. <laughs> they know now. Um, and I feel like when we're out in public, you get noticed a little bit more too. So I think if we continue to have sponsorships buy in uh, and get that big media deal that's coming up we'll be in a really great place but this league has always had incredible players it was all about getting the world to see us and having that visibility and I think we're headed in the right direction awesome well thank you very much and good luck with team USA thank you Alexa go ahead hey Elena hope you're doing well um we've heard a little bit just about how this offseason for you has been less rehab and actually just going out there and being able to play. And so how would you describe what this off season has looked like for you and just where things are at physically and mentally? This has been the greatest off season of my career, especially because of everything I've been through, but to be able to now train and not be rehabbing uh, is so refreshing. It had been many off seasons of rehabbing surgeries uh, or whatever that may be. So to be lifting now, lifting far more weight than I've ever lifted in my life um, and to be on this plan uh, to get me ready and as strong as possible for the season. I feel really good about it. Uh, one more quick one for me to be able to be part of this pool and to maybe be on the Paris team for 2024. What would that mean to you, given everything you've gone through over the last few years, if you were being able to go back to the Olympics? Gosh, it would be it would mean so much. Um, I, there were days where I couldn't sit in a chair for, you know, more than a minute because I was in so much nerve pain. Um, and this has been one of those goals that kind of kept me going through some of the hardest times possible uh, in my life, not knowing if I'd even be able to play basketball again. Um, so to be here now, to be competing, feeling strong, um, certainly the goal is Paris and we'll see how it goes. Thanks so much. Uh, Jerry, go ahead. How you doing, Elena? Um, you, sp Good. you spoke on some of your iconic moments here at USA Basketball. Um, which one is your personal favorite? I mean, it's got to be Rio. 
getting my first Olympic gold medal. Uh, and that team was just, my goodness, so stacked. So that is uh, certainly one of the greatest moments. And then like these camps now, being able to come back and play when I wasn't sure it would ever happen again. So um, just having so much fun with it. Uh, Mike, go ahead. Hey, Elena, thank you for taking the time today. Um, you know, you kind of mentioned earlier about the growth of the league throughout the last 10 years. And I was wondering for you, are you a fan of the super teams coming into the league right now and bringing in a lot more media coverage with Stewie going to New York and obviously everything going on with Vegas? Well, I'm not a fan of any other team other than the Washington Mystics, but <laughs> I do think uh, it's exciting for our league. And anytime we can get more attention, uh, more media coverage and, um, you know, super teams like this, it'll be really interesting. And it makes it fun for the competitors um, to go out there and try to do our best to take them down. And if you had, you know, one goal going into this year, what would you say that would be outside of just, you know, obviously being back to your normal self? Same goal. It always is win a championship. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Jackie. Hi, Elena. Thanks so much for, for taking the time. Um, I wanted to build off of this discussion about free agency, but I sort of want to look at a, a, a different window of time. I'm curious, you know, for you, I guess, being on the outside looking in, because you've been, you know, with the Mystics this whole time, how do you think the concept of free agency has changed since that 2020 CBA to now? And, and what have you noticed this season during free agency that maybe has stood out? I think the prior CBA kind of had like set prices for players and it was almost easier for GMs and players to know, like, this is my value. This is what I'll get paid. Um, and now because of the new CBA and the money is just different, uh, it's been a learning curve for a lot. <clears throat> and I think we see, you know, certain players deciding, do I take a little less in my salary, but take a little bit in marketing deals or, um, you know, do I want the super max? Like what, what are you looking for in free agency? And it's giving people kind of different things to think about. And it just makes it exciting though, when you can see different movement, uh, not just the same teams year in and year out. I appreciate that. And and also to ask you a bit about the mystics, you know, I know a lot, there's, there's a lot of change, but then there's a lot staying the same as well when it comes to some of the players you all have re-signed, but also the yeah. fact that Eric is now the head coach. And so what I'm curious about is how do you think having Eric uh, as the head coach, how is that going to be, I guess, um, a change of pace and and how do you see his leadership style compare and contrast to his father? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, like you said, like, obviously there's some change and there's newness to this, um, but Eric has been around with this program for so long now. Um, obviously it's going to be a new role and a little bit different with him as head coach, but kind of felt like coach T uh, was giving Eric more and more responsibility over the past few years. Like he would run our practices through COVID. There were times he had to coach, um, but we do have a lot of the same pieces. So I think that'll be nice having a little bit of that consistency. Um, I would say Eric's probably going to be a little bit more of a player's coach. Uh, he's very collaborative already. Um, in some of our court work and wants to hear, you know, what we like, what we don't like, what we think about different things. So should be a good collaboration. Thank you. I appreciate that. Enjoy <clears throat> camp. Uh, we're going to go to Grady and then Tyler. Um, we'll just finish up with these three raised hands and then, and then um, let Elena go. So go ahead, Grady. Hi, Elena. I've noticed that, you know, you seem like you have this weight lifted off your shoulder. You're definitely excited to be back on the court, at least more consistently. So I'm just curious to know what kept you going through these, you know, through your injury, through the surgeries and who kept you going? Because you just seem so relieved right now. And it's just so refreshing to see. And it's so noticeable. Yeah, it was always like nerve wracking, taking a new step and wondering, like, is my back going to hold out? Uh -huh. And the unknown of that was really tough. And, you know, the growth of from last camp to 
getting through the WNBA season to now being able to train and do a lot with my back where it's like, if I can squat that much weight or do that, like it just continues to give you confidence. Um, so certainly my trainer has been incredible throughout all of this and will be with me for the rest of my career. Um, and then obviously my wife, she was with me through the toughest, toughest moments and somehow was able to keep a smile on my face and keep me going. Cause there were a lot of those moments where it was just so much unknown. And it was like, if we got each other, we're going to be okay. Like we're going to get through this. So that kept me going. Thank you. All right, Tyler, go ahead. Hi, Elena, good to see you. Good to see you too. I'll be quick. I know you've talked in the past about how important Team USA is to you. And then also in terms of your progression, how big this offseason was going to be for you and for the rest of your career. So I'm kind of curious, what is your maybe what's the next step or is there a next step on your progression to get back to maybe where you want to be even more? Uh, I mean, my my step is just continuing on this path um, to continue to be stronger um, and better. Like it's no longer am I going to be healthy? It's like how can I be the best Elena I can possibly be on court? So that's, you know, where the focus is now, which is a very big relief. Thank you so much. Good luck at camp. Finish up going back to Megan and then I'll let Elena go. Go ahead, Megan. Hi, Elena. I just wanted to follow up with a little bit of a lighter question. Can you talk to us about your Nike shoes and like how you yes. came up with the design and <laughs> um, shout out to the rainbow ones? I love them. Yeah, um, so they are the Nike Air Del Don. I am so excited about these shoes. Um, and each colorway is the story of my life. Um, so, you know, so far I've come out with the Lime shoe and that is the story about me being a professional athlete, but also dealing with chronic Lyme. Uh, then the Be True shoe, the rainbow one, obviously celebrating being gay um, and trying to celebrate everybody's unique self. Um, and then we've gone to the Deladon Designs one. Uh, and that's just kind of like my creativity and love of woodworking. Um, and then we've got, gosh, there's a few more coming out that I don't know if I'm allowed to release yet, but <laughs> uh, they're all on the way and they'll all be released before the season. And this has been a process that I've been through with Nike now for, gosh, it's probably been over four years, just developing the fly ease technique, but a new one uh, that makes the shoe accessible for all. So many of you know, I have a sister with special needs and it's always been so hard for her to get in and out of shoes that I wanted to create with Nike, a shoe that would be accessible for her or young kids or somebody who's getting older and struggles to get in and out of shoes, but then can also be worn at the absolute most elite level. And that also looks really cool. So I, I fully think we have achieved that. I'm so excited about this shoe. Uh, it's been such a fun collaboration and it's truly a shoe for everyone. So it's not just mine. Like the second you get it, it's yours. Be your unique self, celebrate whoever you are. And that's the message behind it. Awesome, thank you. Loved hearing the, the story behind them. Cool, thanks. Thanks everybody. We'll be right back with Angel. Thank you.